Good morning, all. Hey, I'm Hot Rod Bob, and you've got gas. The morning edition coming to you live and direct. Um, if you're watching it right now, which doesn't seem like anybody is. Where are you guys? I'm looking at you. I don't see you. Anyway, I'm Hot Rod Bob. You've got the morning gas coming to you live from beautiful downtown Port Wanini, California. And I'm glad to be here with you. You know, Americans have an infatuation with great big V8 engines. But the Europeans like them too. They just never built them. Ferrari's got V12s. They had a V8. They've had V6s. Hi, Kelly. Good morning to you. And Rolls-Royce builds a V8. Not real powerful V8, but it gets their big sedans around. But performance V8s, that's an American staple. And a lot of companies have taken those American V8s in Europe and put them in their cars. And, and a few Americans have done the same by putting American V8 engines in European cars. Now, one of the examples is the Jensen Interceptor. Beautiful, luxurious, fastback vehicle and convertible. What are they powered by? 440 cubic inches worth of Chrysler V8 engine. Very exciting. Heavy car, beautiful styling, and for a while, well, about 10 years ago, they were relatively inexpensive compared to what they are today. They've nearly doubled in value to triple in some cases. Now, there's other cars. Now, we all know about the Cobras. I mean, hey, Carol Shelby, the Cobra. That was a British car called the AC Ace. Well, the Brits didn't stop with Shelby. They continued on with the AC line of cars and built another one, a cool little rounded sports car, powered by a 4.6 liter current style Ford V8 engine. Now you got to remember at one point in time Ford was the major owner of Jaguar. Jaguar also utilized the Ford V8, same one that was in the Thunderbird, the later edition 2 seat Thunderbird, and basically the the Mustang type cars, but 4.6 liter Camer V8 engine. Neat little car. Now, one of the cars, you got to go back to the 50s, the Allard J2. This was an exciting looking for the time, and I still like it now. It's a very classic design. Two-seat sports car. Originally, they powered them by Ford Flathead V8s. The ones that really got the, the acknowledgement, though, were the Cat Allards, and that's where they stuffed the big Cadillac V8s in them. Allards are still dynamite-looking cars, and since they were a hand-built sports car, another company started building reproductions of the Allards here in the United States as a kit car. And they accepted that as a real Allard because the real Allards were kind of kit cars when they were first produced. Now, I love European cars. Don't get me wrong. They get them fast. They go V8s. They go American V8s. And there's the Iso Revolta Griffo. It's a mouthful. How would you like to say? Yeah, I just got an ESO. Yeah, really? You can take a shot for that? Anyway, the ESO was a fiberglass, was, was it not a fiberglass, but it was a very stylish European-Italian car along the lines of the Ferraris and the Maseratis of the time. Very good-looking, great proportions, powered by Chevy V8 engines. 327s is what they used because that was the motor back in the day when these cars were built. 350 hadn't come out yet. It's a very stylish car. If you can grab one, ah, they're beautiful. They had a top speed of about 145 miles an hour, weighed 3,200 pounds. Now think about that. That's about the same or a little bit less than a Corvette at the time. Another car we all remember, well, some of us that still remember and some of us that can remember, the Di Tommaso Pantera. Beautiful, perfect designed vehicle. Ford 351 for power. Yes, it used the Ford engine. Now, the car was great looking. It had its faults. Again, the Europeans, and they don't seem to build cars for longevity or the U.S. market, as it seems. And the Pantera suffered from a series of issues called rust. 
and overheating. Now, American Ingenuity has fixed a lot of that stuff, and some of the Panteras are just amazing cars. <clears throat> Available through your Mercury dealer for distributing them in the U.S. in the, well, mid-1970s. We all know about the Cobra. We talked about that. The Sunbeam Tiger. Mm -hmm. Shelby had his hand in that car, too. Originally with the 260 V8 and later the 289, Chrysler bought the Rhodes Group, which produced the Sunbeams. And the problem was the 273 just didn't fit in the Sunbeam chassis. Chrysler, in their infinite wisdom, disassembled the Sunbeam company. I have no idea why, but they didn't want to continue to use Ford engines, obviously. So the Tiger went away. Another car came out, the Gordon Keeble. No, there were no elves in this Keeble. Mm -hmm. But it was also powered by a Corvette 327. Actually, they say they said 288, so it probably was a 283, but later on, a, two, a 327 V8 producing 300 horsepower. So the original one had a 283, probably not a 288, as you're saying here, and it was a nice-looking car, pretty, you know, standard European fare for the time, and we're talking 60s. It had a fiberglass body styled by Bertone, so it looked a lot like a Ferrari, actually, at the time. Hi, Larry. How you doing? Bob Pennington. Good morning to you. Monteverdi. High speed. We got the Monteverdi. Well, this was a very angular fastback GT car. And uh, it was out of Switzerland. And it was called the ultimate Swiss car at the time. It was as fast as Ferraris. And what did it have? A Chrysler 440 for power. Yeah. Big Chrysler. Power. Yeah, it did it. It had 375 horsepower. Definitely able to keep up with those Ferraris at the time. Angular looking. Nice looking. Very squared off front end. But cool. Now, a car that I remember, because it was really stylish for the time, and it was chock full of hammy power, was the Facel Vega. Yes, this was another European car from France. And it came out in about 1954, using the Chrysler Hemis at the time. 180 horsepower. Pretty good for the time. They had four doors. They had two doors. They had coupes. Gorgeous cars for the time. A little quirky right now, but expensive as can be. Then there's the Bizzarini 5300 GT Strada. Interesting looking car. Really nice looking kind of combines Ferrari, Maserati, and Marco. And it really is a cool-looking car. Kind of looks like a kid car to me, but it was fast. It was cool. And it was powered by a 327 Chevrolet engine. They like those Chevy motors, don't they? It's got some great styling. Now, what other cars were out there? Well, there's a couple of attempts at making Corvettes more European. Chevrolet didn't have a hand in this, but the Europeans did, and they made some steel body or aluminum body cars on Corvette chassis. So they had an infatuation with the Corvette and the Chevrolet engines. Although the Chrysler, the Chevrolet, and the Ford V8 engines were the engines of choice for high-performance cars that weren't Ferrari, weren't Maserati, weren't Lamborghini. But they were just as quick. And you know what? They were more reliable. I'm Hot Rod Bob. You've got gas. The morning edition on this Thursday. And as you can see, I'm getting ready to go to Irwindale Drag Strip. That's right. Thursday Night Thunder tonight at Irwindale. If you're in the area, please stop on by. Come on by. Great racing action. Over 200 cars last Thursday night. It'll be Thursday night under the lights at the fastest half mile in, or eighth mile in Southern California. So come out. Now, we do have the fastest half mile as well, but that's on the Speedway. And they started racing last Saturday night. Packed house. Great racing action. They had to open the gates at 2 p.m. And then go on to racing starting at 3. So the Circle Track, it's back in business. They're going strong with great NASCAR racing. The Drag Strip, NHRA. We had Summit Series Junior Dragsters this last Sunday. We've got racing today and again on Sunday. Fun day, Sunday. 
Come on out to Irwindale Drag Strip, your place to race. Gas, the great American auto scene, brought to you by Service Tech Equipment. For all the equipment you need for the shop you've got. Whether you're a commercial business or a home shop enthusiast, Service Tech can help you out. They've helped me out. They can do it for you. And if you want a good laugh, laugh your asphalt. That's right, drag cartoons. Pete Millar's famous Drag Cartoons magazine still being kept alive by Robin Millar. Check them out on Facebook. Both companies on Facebook help and support Gas, the great American auto scene. Thanks, folks, for watching. This will be on YouTube later tonight. Hope to see you there, or you see me there, or we see each other wherever we are. Gas, the great American auto scene. Since 1990, your source for automotive information, trivia, and occasionally a little humor thrown in. I'm Hot Rod Bob, and you've got gas.